Hey, hi everyone. Thank you for joining today. Um, so welcome to our MSc Accounting and MSc Accounting and Finance Live Offer Holder Q&A. So I'm just going to flick over to the next slide that will give you a bit more information about how we're going to run the session today. So it will be a panel session today, so there'll be a live um, Q&A format. So if you just go to the panel uh, that you'll see in Zoom and click on the chat icon, uh, in the panel along the bottom of your screen, you'll be able to type your questions into the chat window and then um, we'll pick them up from there and we'll make sure that they get answered by our panel. So do start asking questions straight away as soon as you have them today. We'd love to hear, uh, hear from you today. So we've got a really exciting panel lined up for you today. We have our two program directors. Uh, we have um, Dr. Viet Dang, who is the program director for MSc Accounting and Finance, and Dr. Safai Yasmin, who's the program director for MSc Accounting. Uh, so I'll hand over to um, Dr. Viet now to sort of introduce himself um, and uh, some of the students we have on the call today as well, uh, and Dr. Safai as well. Thanks very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Viet Dang, and I'm a professor of finance. I am director for the MSc Accounting and Finance. Very happy to be here today and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have regarding our MSc program. Thank you. Hi everyone, um, I'm Dr. Sophia Yasmin. Um, I'm a lecturer in accounting here at Ambus uh, and I'm also the program director for the MSc in accounting. Um, I'm also really happy to be here um, and uh, I hope I can you know, answer any questions that you have, uh, uh, anything that you can think of, you know, just feel free to ask on the chat. Um, we've got a, a really good, um, some uh, a good selection of students here with us today as well. So, you know, if you've got anything that you want to ask with regards to student life, you know, please feel free to ask them as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask one of uh, so each of our students um, to just tell you a bit about themselves. Um, and hopefully that will um, get the conversation going. So shall I um, pass on to uh, Bead? Hello everyone, um, so my name is Bede Gallagher. I am a MSc student on the accountancy programme. Uh, before I came to Manchester, I studied business and management with accountancy and finance uh, at Edgehill University. Um, uh, so yeah, if anyone's got any questions regarding how I found the course, um, then yeah, feel free to, to ask me. Channel? Okay, uh, hello everyone. My name is Chan Nong Nat Nai, and I was here from Thailand. And now I'm MSc student in accounting program as well. So, yeah, the same. If you have any question regarding how we find the course, how we choose this university, just please ask me. Thank you. Fabian, do you want to go next? <laughs> Kiki? You're still muted, Kiki. Uh, hi, I'm Kiki Tai. I'm from China. And uh, uh, currently, I am the MSc Accounting and Finance student. Uh, and, say, and same, I'm very happy to answer any type of questions about university, about my experience. And thank you. Excellent, thank you. Um, so we've had a, a question come through um, about the boot camp, Cheng. Thank you for the question, Cheng. I'm assuming that question's to do with the, the trading. Is it with regards to the trading boot camp that you want to, to learn about? So have any of the students attended this? Yeah, thank you. Oh, oh sorry, I registered to attend this because I know it's going to be happening in a, in a few weeks' time. Maybe Viet can tell us a bit more about this. Yes, yes. I think um, this is, uh, if it's um, what I understand it correctly, so this is to do with the Amplified Trading Bootcamp, usually uh, run in the first week of June. So uh, many of you actually will, um, many of the um, students on the panel will have the opportunity to, to do this uh, maybe the next uh, few days. This is, I think, a um, one-week intensive training program for students to learn about techniques, how to trade, 
this is a program run by the um, company Amplify Trading. This is a quite well-known company which provides training for a number of uh, global institutions such as HSBC, City Group. And what you do on this program is that you have five days of intensive training, eight hours per day. So uh, in the morning, you will be uh, learning theories on techniques, how to trade, um, foreign exchange, and um, other financial instruments, swaps, options, forward contracts, so on and so forth. And in, in the afternoon, you have the opportunity to actually apply these uh, techniques uh, into um, real trading, simulated trading actually. This is actually a very popular activity that our students seem to enjoy very much because it helps bridge the theory and, and practice, showing students basically how to apply theory into practice. I'm sure you'll like it and uh, hopefully even the students on the panel, uh, once you have the opportunity to take this um, training program, then you will be able to also advise our offer holders on the experience. Yeah, we're just checking. It's actually, um, it takes place after the exam period. So the exam period is still ongoing here. Um, so um, it's the question I think you've asked is, is it still ongoing because of COVID-19? Yes, they've decided to do a virtual session um, for us because of, um, of you know, everything that's going on. So it's still uh, going to go ahead. Um, it's going to be in a different format, but it's, it's definitely going ahead. Uh, anybody else? You're, you're welcome, Cheng. Um, so what we can do now is if um, the students want to talk about anything um, in particular that they want to highlight perhaps um, with regards to the experiences on the course, is there anyone that wants to to begin, I think Fabian's uh, Fabian's connection's gone. So, is there anybody else that wants to start? Perhaps Bead. Uh, you, you're <laughs> because you're uh, in, at the top of the alphabet, Bead. Your name comes after Mike. Right. That's why I'm picking on you. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, sure. I mean, like you know, the University of Manchester. From my personal experience, you know, I've. I've I studied at a, a non-Muslim group university in the UK before going to Manchester. Um, and over the, over the years, I've, I've, I've pursued a, a career in finance and investments and I've applied to summer internships, spring week programs, graduate programs. And, you know, I had, I had I'd have some real difficulty in trying to you know, get through the first stages. However, since coming to Manchester, I've had a lot more success in terms of phone interviews, assessment centres, and I actually have got um, a graduate job at, at JP Morgan now. And the only thing that's changed there is the fact that I came to Manchester. And I think what that says is that, you know, you are coming to an institution that is, is widely recognised for the hard work, um, you know, with the students and the expertise from the teaching staff as well. So you definitely made a, a great decision to come to Manchester. Um, I think a lot of people, you know, in, in terms of going to the, taking part in the different uni body activities people have asked about preparing for the courses and I think yeah I think um correct me if I'm wrong on this guys but I think that you do receive some information regarding some reading lists and uh, books mm -hmm. and and other things that you can read before starting the course and I think it's it's it 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 is very beneficial for you especially if it's maybe a, a topic that you know you need to refresh on or something like that it's definitely uh, beneficial to read over those materials and just really kind of familiarize yourself um, before starting because then you can kind of hit the ground running. Um, I think as well, maybe kind of familiarizing yourself with journals, the journal articles. Um, I know that, you know, there's a lot of different uh, journals in the world, uh, different kind of formats and the language in some journals is different to others. And, and so I know that uh, some people um, may find it difficult when you come to Manchester, some, some people well, anyway to uh to kind of read those journals so i think definitely kind of you know looking at um the journals would would, would certainly help as well but yeah can i just very quickly add to what we had just said but first of all be congratulations on, on your um on your uh, job um offer mm -hmm. it's been a really a positive um new story for us i suppose um, but more importantly, for our offer holders, uh, I think what we had just said is very important in terms of, you know, uh, 
get prepared um, even before you uh, come to Manchester. Uh, so a lot of our courses uh, do require a certain level of uh, understanding of um, key concepts in accounting finance, uh, certain knowledge of um, mathematics and statistics. And as a result, um, we, we do send uh, to our offerholders, our offerholders a created reading list. So please go through certain chapters that we recommend you to read in advance because uh, when you come to Manchester, then um, courses will, will start and you know, they will come quite thick and fast. So it's good that you get prepared, so then you will not um, find certain terminologies or certain terms um, kind of surprising. So I think it's very important that you spend maybe a few weeks in advance, either in August or September, uh, reading those materials. And I think it will allow you to progress very well on our program, having read those materials in advance. Mm -hmm. That's really helpful. I wonder if um, any of our students, um, Kiki um, or um, Shannon, if you can share um, kind of ways that you might have prepared for the course or things that looking back you thought, oh, it might have been helpful if I kind of researched this element a bit more, if there are things that you think could have helped you prepare. Um, okay. Uh, apart from it, I think the important things that you have to prepare is uh, time management. This is because it's really important for the first, like the first semester. I kind of was struggle on the exam. I don't know what to revise. I don't know how to prepare for the exam. This is kind of hard for me because my time management is not that good. So I think. This is important if you can manage your time right, like review before the exam, because on that day I have to I had to carry my books to the city to the London as well, so I can have time to read the London. So yeah, time management is this is important for me, yeah, and everyone as well. I think. Um, well, the most important thing for the reviewing, I think it's a uh, review for review thoroughly, review all the things I have learned, things I um, I'm very, I'm quite afraid of uh, um, guessing what will happen, what will um, exist in the exam. So I try to uh, learn everything um, and review everything. So it, and I think it makes me uh, do better. Okay, great. Thanks, guys. Um, I was wondering if people could just maybe perhaps go around and share um, what their kind of most uh, enjoyable units have been on the program, what sort of modules they've enjoyed the most, whether that's been due to the teaching style um, or kind of some of the innovative things that you've explored. I wonder if you could kind of go around and kind of share what have been your kind of highlights from your from your program. I wonder if, um, yeah, Shannon, if we can start with you, that'd be great. Okay, actually I have like two exam, uh, not exam, two sessions that I like. The first one is I study with Sophie with you. It's about uh, interdisciplinary because that one is kind of new for me. Yeah, I, I never learned this one in the graduate school and undergrad before. So I, I like that one because it's new and I love the energy and from the teachers. I, I love that. And another class is excellence with Stuart Tully. It's very good for me to that one because it's kind of broadened my perspective on audit. Uh, when I was starting in the undergrad, just kind of learn how to do a job, what to what techniques, what method that I can use for the audit. But when I start, when I uh, learn with Charlie, it's kind of burdened my perspective on audit. It's kind of questioned me, why this happened? Why is that and how to do that one? So I think that this is my favorite list too. Great, thanks. Bede, how about you? What are your favorite sort of highlights from the course? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> um, I think in the first semester, um, quantitative research methods um, with Colin 
um, you know, he's a very energetic uh, lecturer. Um, and I, I think that's what, I think you do find that with, with you know, the lecturers at Manchester is that, that, you know, a lot of them do have a passion because they are obviously well-versed in what they're talking about and they, they do know what they're stuff. And I think you can really kind of sense the passion in what they're teaching. And um, I think that definitely helps you learn as well. Because obviously if your lecturers, um, you know, showing passion and interest in it, obviously then it makes you interested in it as well, right? Um, so I think semester one, uh, definitely quantitative research methods. Uh, semester two, um, market-based accounting research with Edward Lee and financial statement analysis. Um, again, you know, very passionate teacher. Um, I think even though it's an accountancy course, uh, you know, a lot of it ties into, you know, the, mar- the financial markets and the impact of accounting information within the markets. And that for me is, is something that I'm interested in personally. So, um, you know, I've, I've really enjoyed those, those modules, especially. Can I just add to that, uh, to what Bede said? I think it's a really important point um, that you made, Bede. Um, our, we're really lucky in Manchester that we've got, um, we can say we have world leading experts um, in accounting research. Um, our accounting, you know, faculty of accounting and finance was ranked, I think it was 20th in the world QS rankings. So, you know, with regards to research, all our research are top researchers and lecturers and professors are top in the field. Um, so the stuff that they teach, they know their stuff, you know, they're experts in that area. And that really comes across in their teaching. Um, so, I mean, and that's why you'll find that if, if they're teaching things like quants to qualitative research, it, you know, or any other you know, more um, advanced finance stuff, um, they're really passionate about it because they do know it um, inside out, really, you can say. Mm. Sorry. Interrupting it. <laughs> well, just, just can I just quickly add to that as well? So I think you know what is quite unique about the way we teach is that our, our teaching um, is, is sometimes, actually, is, most of the time is, is informed by, by our cutting edge research. So, like you said, Sophia, I think um, uh, every one of us who's teaching on our degree programs is either an experienced researcher or sometimes a world class, a leading expert in the area in which we teach. And that's, that, that means that we could actually bring in the um, cutting edge knowledge that we are developing in our area to the classroom. That means that our teaching is not just only deep, but also up to date. And I think that's often the important, um, that we need to, uh, you know, um, the important kind of uh, characteristic or mm. the of our teaching um, that we need to convey to our students. That's great, thanks. Um, Kiki, how about you? What have been your sort of uh, highlights from the course? Or, uh, kind of favourite uh, modules and units have you have you enjoyed? So oh, the first semester course is defin- definitely enhanced me uh, my um, quantitative research methods. Something about that, um, and uh, it's a foundation for the second semester and uh, my dissertation. Dissertation and uh, the. Second semester courses I um, are mostly the selection courses, uh, and I chose the corporate governance, um, which is I think uh, it's kind of uh, courses that um, closely connected with the practices, and uh, uh, we have case studies, and uh, it's very vivid. Um, so I learned a lot from from it. So so many types of co- corporate governances <clears throat> and uh, um, uh, yeah that's all thank you that's great thanks uh, Fabian how about you so we're just sort of discussing um, people's highlights from the from the program um, what's that been their kind of like favorite modules any sort of standout styles of teaching that they really enjoyed um, it'd be great to hear your experiences Right. Um, first of all, sorry that um, my connection has been a little bit rough. So uh, let's see. I don't know what the others have said, but for me personally, I really enjoyed the quantitative research methods, uh, especially uh, Professor uh, Collins' teaching because he has a very energetic, very unique way of teaching that really engages us in uh, in our studies. And other than that, I guess I would say the qualitative research methods as well, because for me, that's the most, um, because my dissertation is uh, qualitative based. So it is a very important uh, uh, 
course for me to actually learn and actually know how to prepare my dissertation because in the past uh, during my bachelor's uh, 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 degree I didn't actually have to write a dissertation or a thesis so I have no, no I have no prior knowledge on that so it really helps that I was able to learn uh, how to actually prepare and craft uh, a thesis from the proposals to uh, making a draft to making the abstracts and everything. Uh, other courses, let's see. Um, I also quite like uh, some of the courses that encourage uh, a more critical thinking on some of the aspects of accounting, such as uh, the uh, the auditing uh, uh, or co corporate governance. As, as it does really make you think of what role do you have in in auditing uh, in general or in corporate governance and how you can um, make the system better. Yeah, I think I think yeah, that's I think that's my my opinion on it. Great, that's really insightful. Thanks so much. So um, obviously the chat window is there and ready for you to answer your questions. So if you've got any questions about whether it's dissertations, whether it's the program, whether it's kind of maybe about the career support. And um, we've already heard kind of Bede mention about his plans for um, after graduating. Um, so whether it's kind of questions about employability, um, kind of employer engagement, we'd love to hear your questions uh, and we're ready to answer them today. Um, I wonder if any of our other students would like to kind of comment on what their, their plans are for after graduation, if they're going to kind of pursue further study or um, if they've got kind of an industry in mind that they'd like to move into, um, that'd be great to hear your plans. So um, let's kick off with Fabian, if you've got um, what you're kind of thinking of after you've completed your master's. Yeah, at, at first I was actually thinking of uh, working in the UK, but uh, since the whole coronavirus, like uh, I'm really, uh, I'm a little bit concerned for my family because I am an only child and I don't know what's going to happen to my family. So I'm think I'm actually uh, thinking of going back to Indonesia and try to get a job in Indonesia. It's a little bit hard because of the time and well, they're, they're decreasing employability by the moment. But fingers crossed, fingers crossed that, that I'll be able to get this job there. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll, I'll do if I work hard enough. That's great. Thanks. Um, Kiki, how about you? What um, what are your sort of plans uh, in terms of perhaps specific roles or industries that you're kind of looking to move into? Um, well, I my plan is go back to China and uh, uh, find a job. Um, maybe th this year will be a little a little bit difficult because of the coronavirus. And uh, um, but I'm still preparing for the uh, like some uh, tests um, the, uh, the or make some applications and and just to start start something for that. Great, thanks. Um, Shannon, how about you? Uh, my plan, actually, I just want to pursue my PhD, like continue to the PhD in somewhere in the UK. Um, I now try to apply uh, Manchester as well. <laughs> and yeah, that's my plan for the futures and hope I can get it. Great, thanks. Best of luck. Um, so we've had a question in um, from Cheng about um, international students coming back to the UK uh, in early October um, and whether they'd be learning online um, if they perhaps can't make it to the UK. Um, so obviously we are planning for, we have, we have delayed the start date, so we're starting um, in October, uh, tuition starts on the 26th of October. Um, there will be an online option for students who aren't available, uh, to, who can't make it to the UK, whether that's due to uh, sort of travel restrictions or medical reasons, whether they can't make it to the UK for that start date. You will be able to start your programme online um, to an incredibly high standard. Um, we have lots with a really strong track record at AMBS of uh, delivering really high quality online teaching, as I'm sure um, Viet and Sophia and all of our students can sort of testify to in terms of the past term, how we've moved online really successfully. So you will receive um, the full sort of level of support that you, that you would also receive if you were on campus. If you are able to be on campus, um, you will have your lectures delivered online. This is due to sort of student safety, obviously, uh, prioritising that we don't have large uh, groups gathering. We will in every decision that we make, we are um, following the UK government guidelines really closely. So um, that's why we've chosen to, to put the lectures online for the first term. We are, however, actively planning for um, small 
uh, face to face teaching. So in sort of small tutorial groups and small seminar groups. So um, because we obviously know how important it is that you have that um, kind of face to face interaction um, with your academics, uh, with your classmates. So we are actively planning to make sure we can deliver that on campus as well, uh, as long as it's safe um, and uh, possible for us to do so. So there definitely are benefits to you um, being in Manchester for that first semester. But we do obviously understand that everyone um, we have students from all over the world and the situation is very, is very different all over the world. So we do, um, we are making those provisions to ensure that you can still uh, receive the, an incredibly high quality of tuition uh, if you have to begin that first semester uh, online from your, from your home country. So um, I think that'd be a good thing to sort of discuss maybe then um, mm -hmm. some of you today, kind of the delivery of um, sort of online teaching. Um, I wonder whether if um, Viet and Sophia want to kick us off and then perhaps our students could sort of explain their experiences in, in the last semester. <laughs> Um, so, um, Sophia, Sophia, would you like to sort of start on, on that? Um, yeah, I mean, um, we went online, um, the, the, our you know, campus shut down on the 17th of March, so we went online straight away. So the students that are, are here, you know, on the panel, they've been uh, doing uh, online lessons for, you know, the majority of the previous, this semester. And now all of the dissertations, you know, supervision, everything is going to be online. So they can give you, um, or, you know, who, the offer hold is a really good idea of the kind of um, support we can provide online. I mean, we have, you know, like we said, high quality lecturers. We can we provide really um, a, a really good, I think, online experience. Um, we've been uh, working really, really hard. Um, all the lecturers flat out. I mean, uh, I, I I can really say for the rest of my colleagues, but I can say for myself as well. Um, everything was put on pause and all we did was make sure that our online learning um, was um, up, to, up to, you know, really high quality standard because we, you know, we appreciate the students um, that have, um, that were, you know, that we were teaching this semester. It was entirely unexpected for them. Um, and we appreciate that quite a lot of our students um, at the moment uh, left the UK and travelled back to various countries. Um, so we, we spent a lot of time thinking about the best way that we could provide this online provision for them. Um, quite a lot of thought went into um, designing the assessments now because, like I said, we've got the exam period now. So we spent a lot of time thinking about the most fair way to provide um, online learning. And um, coming into next year, um, like you say, we, we've, we've delayed the start date till the end of October. It's usually the end of September when we start. But looking at the way things are going, um, you know, the safety of our students has to be paramount. Um, so if you can get in by October, brilliant. You'll still get to see your, you know, your lecturers. It'll be in small groups, you know, seminar sessions. We can't provide large lectures because it's just not going to be safe. But you can still have the interactive experience with us online. Um, all of our lecturers are available, you know, via email anytime. We'll have virtual office hours, so you can log in and still see your lecturers. Um, and then moving forward, hopefully things will start to go back to normal from January onwards. But again, we can't say we, we you know, we're um, dependent on what the government guidelines are. Um, but if if it is, um, you know, if it does go back to normal, then in a way you'll you'll have less online learning then. The current students because the current students had the majority of last semester um, and all of uh, the summer um, online as well and it's just been uh, unfortunate because we really enjoy the face-to-face -face interaction um, but uh, having said that we you know we still try to provide the, uh, the very best online experience as well and I'm sure we uh, will agree. Great. Yeah, um, Viet, can you comment on kind of the the switch to online learning in this last semester for the uh, MSc Accounting and Finance, and yeah, kind of book, um, your plans for next semester as well? Yes, I think um, Sophia has answered the question in great detail. So I just like to very quickly add two points. Uh, first, uh, I could, uh, from my experience, um, really tell you that all of the colleagues in accounting and finance have done their very best. You know, we have a WhatsApp group whereby people have just texted each other asking for um, advice, asking for help in terms of uh, dealing with some technical difficulties, making sure that all the online lectures, all the online classes would be able to run properly uh, to the best standards. And I think uh, uh, having this, this group chat has really helped all of the colleagues uh, in terms of 
keeping up with the standards, delivering all the lectures, materials, and um, also uh, dealing with the challenges of uh, online assessment and so on and so forth. So uh, be rest assured that um, we have been trying our very best to maintain the quality of teaching, even if we have switched to online teaching. And going forward, uh, already there's been a lot of talks about how we could further improve the quality of online teaching, especially online lectures. So there have been some talks, for example, uh, for example, um, maybe providing further equipment for lecturers uh, so that we could provide experience um, very similar to what you would, um, what you would have in face-to-face -face teaching. Uh, so we would, for example, um, have um, maybe uh, screens or even um, very, very good HD webcam and, and, and other equipment that will allow us to really improve the quality of online teaching. Now, just one very quick point on dissertation. So this is um, a challenging part because in the past, you know, when students uh, do dissertations in the summer, they have face-to-face -face, uh, contact with their supervisor. But this year, obviously, is not possible due to the coronavirus situation. Uh, so we have switched um, dissertation supervision to online, online supervision. And at least from me and speaking with other colleagues, the experience has been very, very good. So we have been using Zoom, for example, for our... Uh, online meetings and for me I, I've conducted one meeting with my students and everything has gone very well so far and we would continue as normal. The nice thing about Manchester is that we have um, access to many online databases and that means that even if we are working online you can still download the data from those databases. You can still use the software that you could usually use uh, on campus. And that means that you could continue doing your research as usual. Thanks. Um, just for a very quick point, so I think uh, just one person, one, one very important um, member of the team we haven't heard so far, Leslie Yan, uh, administrator, she's been dealing, dealing with you know, a lot of um, issues, uh, admin related issues, student related issues, I think uh, over the years, and, and uh, I think it would be good to hear from her in terms of um, how the switch um, to online teaching has been going and also share some perspectives in terms of how she has responded to student queries over the last few months. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was obviously, it, it all happened <clears throat> really suddenly. Obviously the university shut down and, and every, everyone at first was a bit, you know, we didn't know how it was all gonna work, but everyone, everyone responded really well. Everyone's adjusted really well. Um, <clears throat> all the lecturers that I've been in contact with have all adjusted really well to to moving everything online and there were you know a few issues to start with but they were, everything was resolved and it's all it's all been going really really well um <clears throat> uh we've had a, a few students that have struggled to to uh <clears throat> to get online to, to to access online lectures but um we've, we've been able to resolve all the issues and yeah there haven't been any long-term outstanding issues everything's just gone gone really smoothly Great, thanks. Um, Fabian, you mentioned that you're writing your dissertation at the moment. So how um, have you still been able to kind of access all the resources? And um, Viet sort of mentioned uh, the support that's still available and the sort of one-to-one -one meetings with your um, supervisor. So yeah, I wonder if you could just sort of share an insight into, into that. Oh uh, yeah, uh, so um, for my dissertation, my dissertation is uh, mostly code based, so there's uh, I don't I don't need to use some of the more advanced uh, softwares, but still I need to find lots of uh, different papers for my literature reviews. So in that area, like the uh, the the, uh, uh, the university has provided a lot of uh, uh, support for me to be able to continue to search and uh, for my uh, for my papers to read. Uh, my supervisor, uh, Matteo, is also very, very helpful. He's been uh, messaging me to email, to to face-to-face uh, uh, -face meeting, to uh, a Zoom as well. So uh, I was able to get like a one-on-one -on -one, um, consultation on what should I do with my with my dissertation, how should I move forward. So in that sense, yeah, it's it's been a really great help uh, in this in these tough times. That's great. Thank you. Um, and on Kiki, I wonder what your experience of um, sort of learning more online has been over this past semester, how you found being able to still access the resources and, and engage with your classmates and academics? Um, oh, uh, I found the, the 
um, facilities are very good. Uh, for example, the podcasts, I can hear uh, the voices in podcasts very clearly. And I think it's better than the, um, the voices in previous years. Um, um, so um, maybe it's the facility advancement. I, 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 I'm not sure, but it's more clear this year. And uh, um, the, the, um, we can ask uh, lectures quest uh, questions in the dis uh, discuss forum on the Blackboard directly. And uh, uh, everyone can um, see your question and the answer. So everyone can see others' questions. I think it's very convenient. Um, if you got some questions, you can uh, search the previous questions or uh, ask one new one directly. It's very convenient. Um, definitely helped me a lot. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um, and Bede, I wonder if you can share your sort of experience of um, moving online this last semester. Yeah, sure. Um, I think you know we were we were quite fortunate in the sense that uh, you know. Um, the second semester was already underway, so we did get some face-to-face -face time um, in, in the second semester. Um, but, you know, I think the UK, I think we, we didn't really expect it um, as much. So it was kind of very sudden, you know, the country went into lockdown and everything moved online. And so, you know, I personally, I was quite impressed with how quick um, the, the, the changeover happened. Um, you know, like, like sort of been mentioned uh, Manchester has a podcast service, so m the majority of lectures, um, depending on your lecturer, uh, would, would actually record the lectures and that, that have already taken place. So that's very helpful. Um, but, you know, online, the, the lectures went out of their way and recorded all the, the, the lectures since lockdown um, at home. Um, you know, and the quality the quality's still there. Um, you know, I don't feel as though... It, the quality is sacrificed as a result of, of COVID-19. I think it's, it, you know, it's, it's still there. Um, it's definitely helped me. We had revision lectures. Um, I know for elements of market-based um, accounting research and financial statement analysis, we had a, a live lecture where we were able to actually ask questions on the, on the exam and on the, on the topics, um, you know, and that was really helpful. And it wasn't a case of, um, you know, it was, we, we were given a set time but it wasn't a case of, oh, you know, if you couldn't make it for whatever reason, um, you know, you've missed your chance. The lecturer actually would stay in the room until, you know, for the whole session. So if you were late or for whatever reason, it's fine. You know, you've, you've, they are very accommodating for that. Um, I think in terms of contact, I've had contact with my uh, dissertation supervisor. I've had contact with a couple of lecturers as well. And, you know, the, the response time the response time is, is, is incredible. You know, so there's no you know, the anxiety of it all is, it's kind of subdued by the fact that, you know, Manchester have been really responsive and, you know, I am very appreciative of that because it, like I say, it's, it's been a difficult time for everyone, but I feel as though it's, uh, Manchester has been really responsive. Yeah, that's really reassuring to hear. Thank you. Um, Shannon, just quickly before we move on to some of the questions in the chat, have you got anything to add to, to your experience? Uh, for the podcast, right. I, I, I think I, I like the podcast because, you can pause and you can play whenever you want to to, to play. And uh, according to the, the classroom as well, you can spend the whole day in your room and play your podcast. I think it's very good for, for, for the video podcast and the record as well. That's great. Thank you. Um, I'm going to hand over to Dr. Sophia now. We had a question um, about um, MSc accounting, so whether it's more theoretical or more computational so i'll hand over to you yeah thank you um for that question now our msc accounting um it's the aims of the msc accounting program is to help you develop um, an advanced knowledge of accounting theory and practice now um having said that um you have the option of taking a wide range of modules um the purpose of this is to uh, really get you to advance your thinking and you know, you advance your, uh, give you already a more depth uh, of knowledge in various areas of, uh, of accounting. So, you know, you'll have options to do modules like management accounting, but it won't be the, the technical management accounting that you're used to in undergraduate. This is more the, the more the deeper, uh, you know, so you get a deeper understanding of um, how management accountants behave and why they make decisions um, the way that they do. You'll get the opportunity to do 
um, corporate financial reporting, but then it's not going to be the financial reporting that you learned in under, undergrad. It's the more deeper understandings behind what corporate financial reporting is and why certain decisions are made and um, how um, the different, um, you know, how, um, again, how businesses make decisions with regards to financial uh, financial reporting. So I guess you can make the MSc accounting computational if you want by taking those modules that are more computational based. But the purpose of the MSc accounting is not it's not a finance based module of a program. For that, we have the accounting and finance if you want to do more finance related modules. The purpose of MSc accounting is really to give you an in-depth advanced knowledge of accounting theory and practice. Um, and which is why the modules on the course are more linked to um, linking the theory with the practice. Um, and so you'll see modules like interdisciplinary perspectives on accounting, where we go through really in-depth um, accounting research. And that helps you um, form the basis, perhaps, if you want to do, um, you know, it, it helps you really think through uh, qualitative research. Um, we have modules such as auditing, but, you know, as uh, Fabian and um, Chanan have said, it's not auditing in the in the technical sense is auditing thinking about um, what's been going on in the auditing profession um, and making giving you a more deeper and broader understanding of the subjects um, so yeah it's it's definitely not computational but you do have the option of taking modules here and there um, if you want to to add that in great I wonder if any of our students um, have got anything to sort of add any of our MSc accounting students who want to add anything to um, to answer that question Fabian, is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, yeah. To be honest, like Sophia's explanation is very detailed. Uh, if there's anything that I, I'd like to add, it do, uh, as I said before, it does really uh, develop uh, your critical thinking ability as you are you have to delve deeper into the inner workings of the, of the subject uh, that uh, you'll be learning. So I believe that it, it will be helpful, for, uh, although it doesn't really uh, help directly it i think it does it will help indirectly in in whatever th that you're going to, to be doing in the future whether is it whether it being uh d doing phd or maybe trying to get a job yeah that's great thank you um shannon how about you is there anything you'd like to add to uh, to sort that question mm, i think actually it's quite clear from sophia <laughs> that we based on the practice and uh, theoretical, not that. But but the course module that I have learned for the two semesters is, is not based on the a calculation or something like that. Even we have something like a financial analysis, it's not that based on how you calculate or how you compute uh, the intrinsic value or something like that. We kind of based on the theory and the research that kind of guide us for the method of the two that you can use when you want to value some things and in terms of like a stock values. Yeah. That's great. Thanks. I wonder if, um, oh yeah, sorry, I was going to, I was just going to hand over, I was just going to hand over to you, Dr. Sophia, and just say if there's anything, yeah, that you want to sort of talk about more about your program and wanted to highlight today. Thank you. Um, but I was just going to say this is one of the reasons why uh, one of the you know requirements for the course is that you do need to have a really good um, understanding of accounting. So your undergraduate degree, you know, it needs to be in accounting, um, and you need to have had, uh, you know got very good marks in accounting because we're not going to teach you the technical aspects. We expect you to know the technical aspects, and what we do on this MSc is build on that um, and to give you, uh, like I said, a more broader and deeper understanding of the issues underlying accounting. Um, and, we're, you know, we're trying to, in some ways, bridge that gap. If you want to go on to do a PhD, the MSc in accounting is a really good, uh, you know, stepping stone for that because we do, you know, give you all the, the tools that you need to go on to do that. Likewise, if you want to perhaps go into a senior position, um, you know, in, a, in accounting in the accounting profession, you don't just need to know the technical, you know, the, the technicalities of accounting. You need to know all the, you know, the other things that are going on in the background. And that's what the MSc Accounting in Manchester does for you. Um, and at the same time, 
when you come to do your dissertation, um, you know, like I said, we have uh, people that are experts in the field. So when you come to choose your dissertation topic, um, and perhaps I'll just explain quickly how we do that. Um, what we do is um, all our um, lecturers and professors, they provide a topic of their interest to the students. And then the students can choose which topic that they want, you know, to do the dissertation on. Obviously, it can be difficult to give everybody their first choice. So everybody's asked to rank, um, you know, the topics one to three. And then usually people get allocated the first or the second choice. Um, and what that means is then not only are you doing the topic that you want to, that you're interested in, but then the person that's supervising you has given you a topic that they're interested in. So it becomes a really close relationship. Um, and that's why I think our dissertation and the whole supervision process is, um, is uh, 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 I'd say it's a more unique experience than perhaps other universities. That's great. I wonder if any of our students want to comment on kind of their experience of the decision process and like uh, Sophia mentioned, sort of um, choosing their topics and um, yeah, how their kind of process of that was. I wonder if anyone wants to comment on that. I'll do. Um, the process itself is actually very, very, uh, let's say, uh, very fast because all you have to do is to choose a topic that has been uh, uh, picked by the uh, by the lecturers, and from that, uh, you you give your uh, your uh, chosen topic to the program administrator, which is Leslie. And then after that, uh, for, after a couple months, I guess a month or two, uh, they will give back uh, the topic uh, that, for, uh, that has been allocated to us. And from there, of course, uh, because it's still in the middle of the semester, uh, we are still not expected to actually start with the with the uh, actual dissertation uh, process, but uh, you you will be given some initial uh, reading list as well. So if if you want to start ahead, you can start with those uh, reading uh, reading lists. That's great. Thanks. Um, we have another question uh, in the chat. Um, I'm going to direct that again to um, Dr. Sophia. Um, so it's from Elise. Um, and it's is it necessary to prepare for ACCA or ICAE? Sorry, ICEAW exams before we get into the MSc accounting program. Um, so specifically, no. Um, if you already have a really good undergraduate degree in accounting, um, you know, a first or an upper second class equivalent, then no. Um, but if your degree was in an alternative subject, then um, you do need to show that you've got a relevant advanced um, UK, you know, so ICEAW, like you said, professional accounting qualification. Um, we do allow people to apply um, who have undergraduate degrees in business administration or business management, but we give preference to those students who have um, an undergraduate degree in accounting. Um, so if you've not got that, then you need to do the professional, um, the professional course. Otherwise, it's, if you have an undergraduate degree in accounting, then no, you don't. That's great. Thanks. Um, We've had another question, um, so I think this is more uh, for our students as well. Um, so could you please share with us some information about careers or internship support we could get from our school? I'm going to actually hand over, I think, to Leslie first to sort of advise on. Um, we have a great careers service at, M at AMBS. Um, and yeah, I suppose if you could sort of just explain a bit more um, about how that works and how students can get involved with that, that would be great. Uh, yeah, we have a, a dedicated um, careers team um, in, in AMBS. There's a, there's a, a university-wide one as well, which students can access, but we also have a dedicated AMBS one. Um, they're really good. They're really involved with the students. They send out uh, weekly emails to all the students. Um, they, they do webinars. They do. Um, you can go and see them face-to-face. -face. Um, they they do. Um, you can go and see them. Students can go and see them if they want to. Uh, if they want to have a look at their CV. Um, cover letters, things like that. They can advise on on all aspects of of, of, um, of careers um, to our students. So I know, I know our students find that really valuable. That's great. Thanks. Um, I wonder if um, Shannon, Shannon, have you engaged much with the career service during your time here? Um, have you kind of uh, t taken support from them? No, not really. <laughs> No, it's a great service, and as I say, it is, it is there um, if you if you choose to engage with it. Have, have any of our students kind of got involved in the career service? If you want to just raise your hands, and if you'd like to kind of mention anything, yeah, great, Fabian. 
just a little bit though, during the early, uh, during the first semester, uh, there's uh, the career service provided quite a lot of, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, helps, I guess, uh, on, on lectures on how to improve your CVs, how to uh, integrate your LinkedIn. And uh, I've been attending those sessions to, uh, to be able to, to act to well yeah to improve my CVs and and actually yeah um, I've also uh, had uh, one or two I believe uh, sessions with the career service so what what you do is uh, you book a time uh, that uh, you that uh, for when you actually meet with them of uh, uh, from the previous week so after that if you get a slot because it's very competitive to get to get a slot on uh, for the career service because everyone um, lots of people are using it so once you do get it you'll be able to get on a one-on-one -on -one session with the career service and then you can ask whatever whatever uh, you want to consult with them that's really helpful thanks and um, for all our offer holders we will have more information uh, coming to you in the coming um, sort of weeks and months about um, sort of our plans for um, sort of extended um, careers and employability uh, induction uh, activities this, this year, because obviously we're aware that um, it's going to be a bit of a different start to the year. So we will sort of have extended um, activities around that and you'll get some more information about those soon. Um, and we'll also have some more information about if you are perhaps starting the semester um, online, ways in which um, the career service will still be able to support you um, virtually uh, and ways in which um, we'll be adapting to sort of that, that situation at the start of the next semester. So. And um, there'll be lots more information coming to you about that as well. Um, I wonder if, um, so we're coming sort of near, we've got about 10 minutes left in the session. So if you do have any questions, um, please do put them in the chat now. Um, I'm just perhaps going to go uh, around and ask um, sort of all the students for sort of perhaps their one, their one highlight of their sort of master's experience, whether that's maybe more related to your program or the people that you've met um, or some of the opportunities that you've had available to you. It'd be just great to kind of hear your, your, your highlight from the, from the course. Um, so let's, um, let's start off with um, Kiki. What was your sort of highlight of this past year? Hi, Kiki. Oh, I think we're just having some sound issues with Kiki's mic there. Um, we'll hand over to Shannon then just to kick us off about your highlight from the last year. Um, okay. <clears throat> Firstly, I met friends, a lot of friends like from all over the world, like Stabin and Bede as well. There's my friend who work together and like hang out together as well sometimes. And another thing is, I met a lot of like sophisticated lecturers or professors here in Manchester, especially for my uh, supervisors for my dissertation, who's Chris Humphrey. This, he's really good, well known, and he's really pushed me through the dissertation process. I think it's really great experience here in Manchester. And another thing is, I like about the University of Manchester. It's, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's about the building. It's a style building. The kind of mix between medieval style building and the modern one together. So that's why I, I, I like this university. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Shannon. Um, Bede, how about you? What's your sort of highlight been over this past year and of your master's experience? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, <clears throat> I've really enjoyed it. I think, you know, as, as Shannon said, it's, you know, I've, it really kind of broadens your mind. Um, you know, I, I studied accountancy uh, in my undergraduate, and it's, it is very kind of technical, and you learn the technical aspects of it. But you know, on the master's course, it really kind of you know you really kind of stretch your knowledge, and you learn a lot more. Um, I think, but not only do you like increase your knowledge, but it also increases your skill set. So critical thinking and um, analysis. Um, you know, especially with regards to the exams, which are all mainly essay based. So, you know, you do pick up some skills which are important in in careers. Um, you know, I think one of the things that is really kind of that I was really happy with was that um, I know there's the opportunity to be to receive some kind of educational support with the CFA level one, um, which I was very fortunate to receive, and that's a highlight for me because it's something that. I have been kind of working towards um, over the past couple of years. And so being given that opportunity and having that support has is, is, is been, you know, a really, 
has been a highlight for me. Um, and I, you know, I'm really appreciative of the support that Manchester has given me. Great, thanks. And Fabian, how about you? Yeah, um, for me, uh, other than the ac academic part of the university, I've also been making connections with people from outside uh, the business school as well. So for me, that was the highlight because the university itself also provides lots of uh, different opportunities for you to meet other people around the campus or even from outside the campus. We have volunteer volunteering activities. We have like societies. I, I've been I've been in a couple of uh, of societies. Like uh, I've been in like uh, I play handball. I play uh, I uh, attended like board game sessions, and that's a really fun way to uh, meet with other people who may not uh, be exactly from your uh, course. So it 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 can uh, widen your connections with uh, with people on the campus, and it will definitely help you with. Uh, with uh well if you if uh, you if you're able to go to the to, to the uk it'll be very helpful for you to uh be able to go around with them and have and spend time with them outside of the class yeah that's it that's great thank you um i wonder if we can hand back over to um dr Sophia and dr viet now just to sort of um oh sorry just another question coming actually we'll skip to that quickly um, that's from uh, Elise and it says will we get learning materials such as reading lists before the term starts we did cover some of this at the start of the session um, but just to recap um, I wonder if um, we had Dr Viet you could just sort of uh, recap on some of the materials students can expect to receive before they uh, come, to, come to Alliance MBS yes um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the section uh, so we do send out a pre-reading list I think usually in July or August and then uh, it does have um, you know um, a list of texts or journal articles or certain chapters in, in a text that your students are supposed to read. And it does um, refer to every single module that you are going to take um, on the degree program. So I think, again, the advice is that you should go through the list carefully. In particular, um, if you can spend a few weeks in advance in August or September going through the chapters, the text and the journal articles, because they will be, um, they will be relevant, they will help you uh, get prepared, get ready for the lectures before the term starts. Thanks, that's really helpful. Um, I guess, yeah, just to ask sort of um, Dr. Sophia if you've just got anything you kind of want to um, just to say to our future students um, or just anything that you'd like to just sort of still um, summarise from today. Um, well, I guess I hope this session was useful um, and we've answered um, any you know, questions that they, they've had. Um, I hope that um, they're feeling more comfortable now with uh, coming to Anvers and um, if they've got any questions, um, you know, or if they just to keep in contact with us really, um, to keep engaged with us. There's lots of sessions and events that, you know, you're organising maybe closer to the uni body things and stuff and um, just to uh, you know I wouldn't get um, don't get worried you know don't get anxious about things starting I guess but everybody's in the same boat and um, it just um, you know would be lovely to see everybody <laughs> come in October. Definitely yeah and um, likewise Dr Viet have you got anything you'd like to also add to? Just a very very quick point so I think um, um, just be reassured that we have been preparing for our online teaching from October. And um, of the, although we know that the pandemic is substantially um, a lot of uncertainty about it, but still we have been taking steps. And as a result, uh, I'm sure that our online teaching, our online lectures in October will be of very good quality, the highest quality possible. So I, I look forward to seeing you um, in September. Um, either you know online via our lectures or face to face in small group tutorials. That's great. Thanks very much. Um, just on the screen there, there's just a few useful links for you. So there's just the links to both your course profiles, so you can sort of find out a bit more information um, there. But you're probably very familiar with those already. Um, we've also got our latest applicants update um, with any coronavirus information. So if that, there is, as soon as we have new information um, for you, it'll be on that page. So just be uh, be sure to check that regularly. We will also communicate things with you via email as soon as we have those. So keep an eye on your inbox. Um, and our admissions team, if you've got any sort of specific questions about your application um, as well, that's that's the place you need to go to. So that's great. Thank you for joining um, today, everyone. I hope you found um, 
as our program director said, I hope you found the session useful uh, and reassuring. Um, and thank you very much to our four students uh, for joining today and for Leslie Ann from the programmes team. Um, you've all provided such fantastic insights uh, into your programmes uh, and we really appreciate your time today. So thank you very much, everyone. And take care. And we hope to see you at Alliance MBS uh, later this year. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you.